as symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Doc Mark 76 this week, 1990. Wrestling fans, welcome to Clash of the Champions 13 Thanksgiving Thunder. I'm your host, Scott Mark 76, joined by my friend and partner, Bill Knight. And we are starting things off on fire. These two tag teams could not wait until the beginning of the show. They're in the ring already fighting the way, Bill. Well, I'll tell you what, they started off like a house of fire. Uh, they jumped right into the ring. We got four guys into the ring all once. A Texas Tornado tag to get things started here at Thanksgiving Thunder Clash of the Champions, and uh, you talk, look look at this power by Wildfire. That's that's no that's a big man. He just picked up right there, Mark. The big cat, Mr. Hughes, over 310 pounds. He's got and Bill, we have a great Michael show lined up today. Absolutely. We are going to find out the identity of the Black Scorpion. As Rich goes for a cover on Rotundo, one, two, and the kick out of two. Oh, well, that was close. Action did end out of the draw, The Black Scorpion will identify himself tonight, Bill. We will find out the identity of the Black Scorpion tonight. I, I, I feel for Sting. I hope we find out who he is. It, it can't be good on the world champion psyche to keep having to deal with this man. Hopefully we do find out tonight. We got action in and out of the ring here in our first contest here, Mark. We got Norman, Norman and the Big Cat. Work. Yes, yeah. on, going to work on the Big Cat. And these two men squared off and... The Big Cat got the better of Norman on a sidewalk slam on the floor. We can talk about power. Big Cat picked up a man who's almost 400 pounds and drove him into the floor. And of course, in the ring, we have Tommy Rich going to work on Rotundo. As he goes for the cover, Big Cat in the ring breaks up the count. That was close right there. No love lost between Rotunda and Tommy Rich. There's no doubt about that. Oh, what a headbutt by Norman. Fails the big cat. Oh, he oh. dropped the leg and crossed the neck. 400 plus pounds. And that, my good friend, will definitely give you a negative attitude. Shot right to the top of the head. Oh, a roll up from behind. Rotundo has Rich pinned. Broken up by Norman. Bill, also on tonight's show, we will hear for the first time since September, uh, I'm sorry, Halloween Havoc, we will hear from the total package Lex Luger. Got a near fall here. Oh, that was close. It's going to be interesting to see how the former U.S. champion responds. We have not heard from him, as you said. Oh, what a pile driver by Rotondo on Tommy Rich. We haven't heard from Luger. It's going to be interesting to see exactly what he has to say to the fans in the NWA tonight. And again, all four of these men began fighting, and we opened our show. We didn't even have a chance to do a proper rundown, Bill. A big nut of wrestling planned here at the Clash. Got another near fall there. And now Rotunda picking up Rich. It was back at Fall Brawl when Mike Rotundo short arm clotheslined Wildfire Tommy Rich after their loss to the Nasty Boys, who will also be in action tonight. He's had a definite change in his persona. He's had a change of philosophy. And there are many that would say it's not for the better either, as he turns on his partner, as you mentioned, unprovoked at, at that. Shot by Norman. Norman going to work on the big cat, Mr. Hughes. Not too many people here in the NWA can do that. Not exactly. I don't know too many men who can go toe to toe with Curtis Hughes on, on any given day, but you got to give it to Norman. He's definitely holding his own here. And now, watch out for Rich on the side. Has Rotundo and drops some chest Ooh. first across the edge of the ring. Norman has it. Right here, fall in the ring. It's no oh. Wow. <laughs> and Norman throwing a tantric in the ring, but a DDT on the floor by Ricardo. Oh. oh, Tommy Rich is out. You got to think he's out cold. Now, now Norman the Lunatic in the ring at the mercy. Rotunda and Hughes, we got a roll up here. Oh, but oh. he's got the referee inadvertently breaking up the pinfall. What a wild match to start off our Clash of the Champions. 
I don't think you could start it off any wilder than this. This reminds me of the old bunkhouse stampedes. All guys in the ring there all at once. The referee is out. We got a submission hold in the ring, but the referee isn't there to check the seat. Rotundo's tapping! He's the tapping. referee was out! Exactly. This match should be over. Oh, that might come back and haunt Tommy Rich and Norman the Lunatic, but the big cat working over Tommy Rich Rotundo taps, Bill. There's no question about it. The match should be over. The referee now back up on his feet. Rotunda now trying to get after Norman the Lunatic here, who nails him with an elbow right to the face there. Big Cat after Tommy Rich. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Rotunda was going to try to pick him up. Ooh. Couldn't pick him up, but took him down with a big right hand. And I don't care how big you are, fists to the eyes will always do damage. That, that'll, oh, wow, right to the floor goes Norman, the near 400-pounder from the state hospital. Oh, look at the big cat. Look at the strike. Oh, what a power bomb. Down goes Rich. Does not go for the cover. I think that's a big mistake. And Rotunda with a swinging neckbreaker takes down Tommy Rich, the former World Heavyweight Champion. And he's at the mercy here, but now big cat rolls out of the ring. There's a... Samoan drop modified version. Rotunda standing over his break. Goes down for the lateral press. Got the leg hook. One, two, and three. Oh, we got a winner. But Rotundo tapped down earlier. The referee was down. And Rotundo and the big cat earned a victory here today in our opening matchup. There's no question about it. We saw him tap earlier in the bout, but there was no referee to get the tap. There was no referee to hear the submission. Thought maybe a near fall hit. Now, there it was. There was the near fall. Just a lot of hard-hitting action here in our opening contest here at the Clash of the Champions, Thanksgiving Thunder. I'll tell you, it was just, it was just front, well, front right from the start. We had a lateral press here. We had a cover. We, had, we got the leg hooked. It was just all over the place. But as you mentioned, I, here's another near fall. It was Rotunda who tapped, clearly gave up. But there was no referee to get the, to, to signal the end of the match. And, well, we saw what happened here. It was Rotunda over his, I guess you would say, former friend, Tommy Rich. There it was. Well, your winners in the opening contest, Mike W. Rotundo and the Big Cat, Curtis Hughes. Fans, don't go away. Coming up next, we will hear from the total package Lex Luger for the first time since losing the U.S. title at Halloween Havoc to Stan Hansen. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this quick timeout. I ask the powers that be in World Championship Wrestling for a few minutes here at The Clash to address what the future holds for the total package. You see, I take pride in being the absolute best that this sport has ever seen. I have beat every man that has faced me in this ring, and I did so the only way I knew how. With a foot on the pedal at 120 miles per hour. That was until last month at Halloween Havoc, when I stepped in the ring with one of the toughest men I have ever faced, Stan Hansen, and he beat me. He beat me because lately, the total package has started to unravel. The 120 miles per hour that I took pride in was starting to catch up to me, both physically and mentally. Please do not misunderstand me. I make zero excuses for losing my United States title. I own it, I take accountability for it, and I have accepted it. Earlier tonight, I had a conversation with the executives here in WCW. I asked for, and was granted, some time off. Some time off to refocus, to regroup, and to recharge. For the first time in four years, I will spend Thanksgiving and Christmas with my family. 
I will use that time to fix what I feel is broken, and I will come back in the new year ready to do what only the total package can do, and that is to be the absolute best this sport has to offer. With that, I would like to thank all of the fans for their support, and I promise that I will make you proud when I step back in this ring. Thank you. And we're back at Clash of the Champions. And Bill, I have to say, I really commend Lex Luger for knowing to step back. He realized he wasn't being true to himself, and he's taking some time. And we look forward to seeing Lex Luger in the beginning of next year. Our following contest will be for the U.S. Tag Team Championship. As wait, oh wait a minute, Warriors making their way to the ring. The Nasty Boys coming from behind. Look out! Look out! And this match is for the U.S. Tag Team Championship. Yes, it is. And it's starting out with a house of fire right here on the outside. Knob's going to work, I think, with that's Chris Youngblood there. I believe it is. Mark Youngblood on the other sides with Jerry Sags. And look at Chris Youngblood going after Brian Knobs. They look very similar to the Youngbloods. I think when their headsets are off, Mark has the longer hair. Okay. The referee, I'll, I'll I have not heard that. a bell yet. Nope. I believe we might hear it now if the referee has some kind of control. Of this oh, man. Almost saw a drop kick there. Almost connected. That could have been curtains for uh, Chris Youngblood on the outside. And there the Get bell has the rung. And Nob's going to work on Mark Youngblood in the ring with a series of right hands. Much like we saw in the first match, this is not a Texas Tornado style match for the U.S. Tag Titles. This is a Australian Rules Tag Team match, tags in this match. And the Nasty Boys, of course, here defending here at Clash of the Champions. The Young Bloods have certainly come into their own here in World Championship Wrestling so far this month. And they have their chance right here to wrest the United States Tag Team Championship from the dominant Nasty Boys, Mark. The Nasty Boys have been dominant. That's the word I would choose as well, Bill. They beat the Stunner Brothers back at Halloween Havoc, and the Stunner Brothers want their rematch. They'll have to face the winner of this match as Nob's going to work again and ramming the face of Mark Youngblood into the ring side. And Sags throwing Chris Youngblood into the ring post from the other side. This is the style of the Nasty Boys, is just smash mouth street fighting. And that's really what got them the U.S. Tag Team Championships, as you mentioned, Mark, back at Halloween Havoc. And now they're going right out. You see the referee counting. Knobs throws Mark Youngblood back in the ring, Mark. This is really, oh, we're going for a pin cover here. Here we go. Going for cover. One, one and a kick out of one by Mark Youngblood. And Sags did damage to Chris on the outside. Makes it tag, and here comes Sags. Indeed. I have been very impressed with the Nasty Boys. Say what you will about their philosophy in life, but they have been extremely, as I said, dominant over the last month, winning the United States Tag Team Championship from the Steiner Brothers, which, as you well know, Mark, is no uneasy task, I'll tell you. And now they got this young team and the Youngblood Brothers is now Sags going to that second turnbuckle on the inside. And drops a fist on the head. Mark, Mark Youngblood needs to make a tag, but not any time once again, the Nasty Boys looking dominant here, going down for the lateral press. Look, a kick out of one by Mark Youngblood. Mark Youngblood. Uh, oh, a belly of the oh. suplex takes over Sag. Could we see a changing in the tide of battle here as the Youngblood brothers could be in the driver's seat now, but Mark Youngblood really needs to take advantage of the situation here. Might be too late as Jerry Sags takes advantage. Ooh, a big elbow. Oh, it looks like Mark is on the outside. Chris is in the ring, Bill. We were wrong. I apologize for that. Okay. <laughs> but like you said, they, both brothers look very similar. They do. So Chris is in the ring as Sags throws Chris into the corner. 
Chris with a reversal. And now throws Sags across the ring. Could we see a tag here? And that's where he wants to be. If the Young Bloods, the Renegade Warriors here, the Young Blood Brothers want to take advantage of this match. Modified neckbreaker there. We got C Mark on top. Oh, and a swan oh. bomb up the top rope. A high flying maneuver by Mark Young. Look. That'll leave a mark. And Nobbs trying to get in the ring. The referee doing his job very well, keeping Nobbs from entering. But Nobbs trying to break up the submission maneuver and does. The Nasty Boys are, in fact, that nasty. They have taken advantage of a situation. They have pretty much dominated this match from the opening bell, even before the opening bells. We saw uh, Youngblood's got him up on his back, but he's going to see it all oh, over the top rope. They need to capitalize. Sags makes a tag in here. Comes Nobbs. Runs charges the shorter block met. Upper right hand. With a reversal by Mark Youngblood. Youngblood trying to take advantage. Oh, no. a reversal into a knee to the gut. What a move by Youngblood. Oh, the big close by oh. Nobbs. Devastating. Just simply devastating. High impact is the uh, is the game plan here for the Nasty Boys. Got to go for a cover here. Oh, too close to the ropes. And again, you have to figure there are tag teams waiting in the wings, like the Midnight Express, the Steiner Brothers, the Fabulous Freebirds, and many more. One team we will not see challenge for the U.S. Tag Team Championship are the Rock and Roll Express. We will, however, see them later on in this program as they ask for some TV time to say goodbye to their fans. And I still can't believe that even back at Halloween Havoc, I was incredulous of the whole situation. It's going to be interesting to see what Ricky and Robert have to say to all their longtime fans here in World Championship Wrestling, Mark. The Russian Lights Week takes down Mark Youngblood as Sags in the ring, but wait, Nobs interfered by mistake, and Mark able to make the tag, and here comes Chris with a big clothesline. Chris with a drop, oh, and Nobs. Sags throwing Chris into the ropes. Chris too fast with the series of kicks to the thighs. The Young Bloods, the Renegade Warriors, feeling the momentum shift here. And an overhead suplex takes down Sag. This might be the, the, the tide of battle turning here that the Young Bloods need, the Renegade Warriors need to take home. The U.S. Tag Team Championship, there's Nobbs oh, to just get in the way. Blood. Wow! Both men down. Both men down. Referee giving a little leeway here. He, he wants he to see the back. He stands, goes for the cover. Referee counts one, two, and a kick out. Oh, man, that was close. That was close. Oh, and the overhead suplex by Sags. Jerry Sags just absolutely executed that suplex perfectly. Is now very uncharacteristically, he's going to that top rope. He he in trouble. Oh. He looks up off the top. Looks the left leg. Will they retain one, two, two, and three? What a match. What a You're great match. Two U.S. Tag Team Champions and Nasty Boys Bell. Proving their dominance once again. They started the match before the bell rung. And it just, you got to give it to the Young Bloods. You got to give it to the Renegade Warriors. They tried to hold their own as best they could. But again, they have been so dominant to have the Nasty Boys over the past month since they won those U.S. Tag Team belts at Halloween Havoc. I got to say, it's going to take a very special team on a given night to take the U.S. Tag Team belts off the Nasty Boys. But I got to give it to Chris and Mark Youngblood. They held their own as long as they could. And here are some highlights from earlier in the contest. A back and forth match, like you said, Bill. The Youngbloods, I'm sure we will not see the end of them as they challenge no. for tag team gold here in World Championship Wrestling. No, they're definitely a force to be reckoned with here in World Championship Wrestling. But there's no question about it. The Nasty Boys, as nasty as they are, as I just mentioned, it's going to take a very special team, a very tough team, to take these U.S. Tag Team belts off these boys from New York City, the Nasty Boys.
There's another near fall. We thought that might be it, but that was probably the last gasp that the Young Bloods had at that point. But there they are, victorious, retaining the U.S. Tag Team belts, Mark. Fans, don't go away. The World TV Tunnel's on the line next as Terry Taylor challenges Barry Windham. We'll be right back after this quick timeout. And welcome back to the Clash of the Champions as following contest will be for the World Television Tunnel Bill. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert has made his return to World Championship Wrestling. Absolutely. A longtime friend of the Stinger. They were adversaries at one point. Clearly, they've been friends over the years. We have not seen Hot Stuff in a long time. But he basically said he doesn't trust what's going on with the Black Scorpion, and he has the Stingers back. That's refreshing to know. Yeah, it seems like Sting is... Like you said this has been a mental warfare on sting ever since the black scorpion made his debut here in wcw and it's nice to know that sting won't be heading into this match alone should the henchman be at ringside as terry taylor makes his way to the ring he will challenge barry Windham for the world tv title and keep in mind that terry taylor was the second henchman uh that the black scorpion had reached out to but terry Taylor, a man of honor, unmasked himself, revealed himself to Sting and said, look, I want to win championships on my own. I don't want to do it behind a mask or working for somebody else. So Terry Absolutely. Taylor with a code of honor. I think we're going to see here in this match right here what we saw at Halloween Havoc. We saw an absolute classic between these two. I'm sure you would agree with that. And it's going to be interesting to see if we could finally maybe get a definitive winner here as you see barry windham out of sweetwater texas the world's television champion makes his way down the ramp to the ring i think you would agree mark we saw a classic last time these two got together in a wrestling ring we absolutely did and windham you know he can beat you many different ways if you recall bill there was a a moment in that match where windham had nailed terry taylor with about five or six straight right hands busting open terry taylor uh, and that just changed the direction of the match completely. It really did. It really did. And I, and I think that with this rematch right here, Terry Taylor's got a lot to go after here. I think he feels that retribution is on the line here. I think maybe he thought that he probably could have took taken the World Television Championship from Barry Windham. But I think this is now his chance in front of a national television audience here at the Clash of the Champions, Thanksgiving Thunder, for Terry to cement his name in the long legacy of the nwa world's television championship lineage but he's got a tough tall task ahead of him and a tall man from sweetwater texas in barry windham second generation wrestlers i mentioned before i think this is going to be a classic of two technicians in the wrestling business there's no question about it i could not have said it any better myself bill i mean barry windham is synonymous with with beating you many different ways he can use his technical skills he can ground and pound you and he's quite agile for a man who's his size six foot six 278 pounds from sweetwater texas second generation wrestler the son of black jack mulligan he's had many menders over his career he started at a very young age wrestling alongside of a tag team partner to his father's believe it or not he started as black jack mulligan jr Back down in the Florida Territory as we're getting into it here at the TV title match. But one thing Barry Windham really had in his favor is he has that pedigree of a professional wrestler that really was ingrained in him since birth. And it has really come to the forefront now here in 1990 as he has established himself as a dominant world television champion thus far, Mark. You'll see in the upper right-hand corner we have a 10-minute time limit. That is our TV time match for here this TV title matchup and the collar and elbow tie up and Taylor with a side headlock on Barry Windham. 
TV title matches, especially this one because of, of television. You just mentioned a special television time limit of one fall or a 10-minute time limit. I got to think it, it only takes three count, three seconds for one of these men to, to, to secure the victory. And hopefully for Terry Taylor and his fans, it might be a new World Television Championship. What a chop by TT on Barry Windham. <laughs> Well, it's the Flying Lariat of Wyndham versus the Flying Firebomb of Terry Taylor as he nails Wyndham with an elbow to the back of the head. Another chop takes down Barry Wyndham, lining him up and drops a fist, but misses. Barry moves out of the way. I think Terry telegraphed at that time. What a shot, a forearm shot by Barry Wyndham right to the face of Terry Taylor. He had that well uh, aimed, has him up for a suplex. But Taylor with a, a knee blocks the maneuver. Nicely done by Terry Taylor. Snapmare taking over and Wyndham's in trouble. As Taylor picks up Barry Wyndham in a big axe handle to the top of the head. <laughs> Rolls over Wyndham, goes for the cover. Referee counts one and a kick out of one by Barry. I think both team, oh, both, excuse me, both, both guys here, uh, they have faced each other before. They are both students of the game, so to speak. They're both very cerebral competitors. They're both scientific competitors, and I think they learned a lot about each other the last time they were in the ring with one another. It's what a power body slam by Barry Windham. He drops a leg across the neck and chest. This goes for the cover. Will that be it? Referee out. And wait a second. We're getting some breaking news here, Bill. What we got here? Bill, what do we and got a here? kick out of two by Taylor. Some breaking what news. The winner match? of this match will defend the World TV title next month at start. Against? against the returning Ray Muda. Oh, wow. Ray Muda making his return to World Championship Wrestling. He will face the winner of this match. What an announcement that was. I believe that the Got Mark 76 trailer has just braked the, probably the news of the year. As we just saw down the bottom of your screen there, the great Muda returns to challenge one of these men at the granddaddy of them all, Starcade. Wow. And of course, Starcade 90 will be very special, Bill. We will be joined by our partner in crime, Zach. Oh, it's like Cradle. Taylor has it. It's like Cradle won in the kick out of one by window. You were saying, Mark. <laughs> Delhi 036316 will be joining us for some backstage interviews. The man behind the curtain will be the man backstage. That, that's going to be great to have him on board for that. Can't wait. Oh, a drop toe hold clotheslines Taylor on the second rope. And now Wyndham using his weight, and there's some agility right there. Bouncing off the ropes, all that weight to the back. Of Taylor goes for the cover. Referee counts one, and a kick out of one by Taylor. I said it before, I'll say it again. Barry Wyndham is probably the best pure athlete in World Championship Wrestling in the NWA. 6'6", 278, he moves like a lightweight. He has so much agility and he has strength that if you take a look at his figure, you wouldn't consider him a power wrestler. But when you can get a man up on that top rope and superplex him off the top, uh, I'm sorry, Barry Windham for me, Mark, has got to be, well, not the total package, but he is the complete professional wrestler as far as I'm concerned. And now, working the arm of Taylor, drops the knee across the arm. And that's the arm that Taylor used to that flying firearm, so a very smart maneuver on the part of Barry Windham. And now slowing down the pace. We are under five minutes left, Bill. Halfway through this time limit match, and Barry Windham has slowed down the pace. I mentioned earlier how what, what a technician Barry Windham is, a very cerebral competitor. He knows what he's doing in that ring. There's no question about it as we see a gut wrench into a power bomb by Terry Taylor. We got a near fall here. One, two. Oh, but Barry Windham has so many weapons in his arsenal. He's got so many ways to defeat an opponent. It, and it could come out of nowhere. It could be the superplex. It could be the Larry. It could be the claw. There's just so many ways. We got another attempt of a pin here. And a kick out of one this time by Windham. Taylor knows that the clock is not on his side. So he's been going for a pinfall attempt every chance he's had. As well he should, early and often. Any chance he could get to secure a pinfall, he really should. And really looked at that firearm as a coup de grace maneuver in this matchup to get this thing over with. Terry's going to the top. He's on the he top rope. Oh. And an elbow drop off the top. Hooks the leg. We have a new champion. One, two, and the oh. kick out by 
Wyndham. Oh, this is very reminiscent of their last encounter. So many near falls, so many just close situations here. What power by Terry Taylor. A power slam down to the mat and Wyndham is hurt. Taylor hooks the leg, goes for the cover. Well, Wyndham too close to the ropes. What power by Terry Taylor. Wyndham six foot six, 278 pounds. Terry, all of 236 pounds of him, lifted him up like he was nothing. What power? Uh-oh. Oh, and the sunset flip by Taylor. Flip. There has won the pig. One, two, and the kick out Ooh. by Wyndham. Man, that was close. Oh, Wyndham firing away with a big right hand. And now a punch to the midsection. And a big really chop. Did. I wonder where he learned that from. Mark, I'll tell you, that's where he really took the advantage to Terry in their last encounter with those big right hands that busted him open, as you said, as we're under the three-minute mark now, heading toward that two-minute mark. Terry Taylor, if he wants to secure the television championship, better come up with a really quick game plan, and uh, very quick. Oh, he went for the Larry, but missed. He sidestepped the Larry. Oh. Roll up from behind. Taylor has a pin. One, two, and the oh. kick out by Wendell. Wow. How close was that? How close was that? Terry Taylor had that uh, Larry at Wilson. Got him in a close line over the top rope. And down goes Wyndham. But Taylor needs to get Wyndham back into the ring. Darn right. He needs to get him in there now. You can't win the television championship or any championship here in WCW with the man on the floor. you got to either get a pinfall or a submission. Terry right now may be looking for a little retribution old school style. Taking it to the streets. Now he gets him back in, Mark. Taylor back in the ring. You better he get on him. We're under two minutes. Title, but you're right. He does not have the time no. to stand around and get the crap out of No, he's got under two minutes now, and it, the, the sense of urgency must be overwhelming right now. He's really got to get on him. He misses. Drop kick in the corner. Now Wyndham has him up on a suplex block by Taylor. Taylor off the ropes, lining up, and a misses. Oh. Crush, buddy. And Wyndham with a side elbow, and down goes Taylor, and Wyndham has a minute and 15 seconds to hold out for this tunnel defense. Well, remember, Barry Wyndham doesn't have to beat Terry Taylor. Terry Taylor has to beat Barry Wyndham. A reversal, and Taylor with a deep oh. and he takes down Wyndham, goes for the cover. Referee counts one, two, and no, oh. and by Wyndham. We are under one, one minute counting. 50 seconds left in the match. Terry's got to get on him. He's really got to try to secure this pinfall. If he wants that World Television Championship, Mark. Throws Wyndham over the rope. Hit, toss back into the ring. Taylor needs to get on Wyndham now. Yes, he does. Throws Wyndham into the rope. 30 Tied seconds now. The there it is. Wyndham. Could this be it? Go for the cover. One, two, and no. A kick. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Neither can I. 15 seconds. I don't know if there's enough time. Taylor to stay on top. Throws him in the ropes. There's a five arm. Goes for the cover. Referee counts. One, two, and three. No. Wait a minute. He did not get it in time. The back was on the floor. The hand could go down. Wait a minute. Let's look at the replay. We're going to look back at the replays here. I. I can't tell. Did the ref get the three count in? One, two, and no. It didn't look Wait a minute. Looks, there's three, another look. One, two, and the zero seconds, oh. and the referee's hand is coming down. Wow. This match will end in the draw bill. Great, great camera shot by our production crew here. I thought that was it. I, I'm sure Terry thought it was it, too. What a match in this TV title match, Mark. Don't go away. The Rock and Roll Express of Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson will bid farewell to their fans. We'll be right back after this quick timeout. Clash of the Champions 13 Thanksgiving Thunder, sponsored in part by Coors Light. Coors Light the Silver Bullet. Try a cool, crisp, refreshing Coors Light today. And also sponsored in part by A&W Root Beer and A&W Cream Soda. Try a tasty, refreshing a and W root beer or cream soda. And fans coming up at the end of December, Monday night, December 28th, on the Godmark 76 channel, live, it's Starcade 90 Collision Course. 
Make plans now to join us for the biggest, baddest event of 1990, the granddaddy of them all, it's Starcade 90 Collision Course. Mark, I, I don't believe what I'm hearing here. I don't. I, I don't believe this. What is? What is Ricky Morton saying? Oh my what God! What are you doing? Are you kidding me? Long-time partner. What is he doing? Oh, fans, we we have much oh. more class to the champions after this timeout. Arn Anderson takes you on the natural butch read. If Arn Anderson wins, they'll get a match at Starcade. We'll be right back into this quick timeout. And welcome back to Clash of the Champions. The following contest will be a match to determine if the four horsemen can get a world tag team title match to start game. It should be a great contest here. As you see, the enforcer, Arn Anderson, being accompanied by Tully. Had a great match at Halloween Havoc, and now they're really trying to get back to that tag team title hunt. Uh, Doom was victorious, as we saw at Halloween Havoc, and I really believe that they got the right guy going after it here in the Enforcer. And I really believe also that if there was ever a time that the horsemen needed to get gold back in their stable, it's got to be, well, if they don't get it, I'm assuming if they don't get it together here, they can kiss a tag team title match goodbye with Doom. Yeah, and that would throw a monkey wrench into the uh, tag team title scene here in uh, WCW because they've been getting a, a bulk of the world title matches recently. Uh, we know that the Steiner brothers are chasing after the Nasty Boys for the U.S. tag team titles. And this would leave a, a void for Doom if the Four Horsemen don't pull out a victory here tonight. Absolutely. As we're uh, awaiting the arrival of the opponent of Double A Arn Anderson as he awaits the arrival. And Theodore R. Long, the godfather. I, I, I'm so impressed with this team of Doom here in 1990. What a force they have become as the World Tag Team Champions, as Hacksaw Butch Reed taking on the Enforcer here. And remember, Mark, as you said earlier, winner of this match, if, if Arn Anderson can secure a victory here, that would lead to a World Tag Team title rematch for the Horsemen. The All-American Ron Simmons, of course, a standout at Florida State University. He will be in the corner of Butch Reed during this contest. and. I got to say, this is not a slight towards Ron Simmons. We just mentioned his accolades in college. But I believe that, as you said, Art Anderson was the right man for the horseman. I believe Butch Reed is the right man for Doom. Absolutely. Butch Reed, the veteran of the two between Simmons and Reed. Uh, Butch Reed, a former uh, Mid-South North American heavyweight champion. He's held championships all around professional wrestling all over the world. But, yeah, in terms of the veteran status, I would say Hacksaw Butch Reed would probably be the one, and most assuredly, the Theodore R. Long did 
Tab Hacksaw to go after double A Arn Anderson here in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. It was back in Philadelphia in September. These two men had the one-on-one -on -one match. Butch Reed got the victory, but there was plenty of interference at the hands of Theodore Arlong. I think that's one thing the referee needs to keep his eye on is not only Tully Blanchard, but also Theodore Arlong and Ron Simmons at ringside. Well, there's interference that could happen, as you just mentioned, on both sides of the ring. I'm not so sure, though, with a two-on-one advantage at ringside that maybe Doom and Theodore Arlong don't have the advantage even on that alone. Oh, Reed takes down Anderson with a big club right forearm and drops an elbow across the chest of double-A Arn Anderson. As you mentioned, Axel Butch Reed, the, the veteran of the duo, Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, the team of Doom. Not taking, as you said, anything away from the credentials of the All-American Ron Simmons, but take a lot into consideration the experience of Axel Butch Reed is double-A fighting back here, Mark. Indeed, he is fighting back, working out the leg, and that's what the Andersons do. They take a body part and they work on it, but Butch Reed too close to the ropes that time. you got to think before this match is over, Arn Anderson will employ the, that old Anderson psychology. Indeed, work on a one body part and render it useless. What a, a maneuver. Clothesline and Hacksaw Butch Reed on that top rope. Reed with a reversal kicks Anderson back. Not showing the effects, but his head went back on that top rope. I think there had to be a little whiplash there. Now Reed back in control, working over double A. Has him in a front face lock, so he's up for a suplex. Locked again by Anderson. Go for it again, Bill. Third time's a charm. He's got him up. And there it is. Snaps that suplex off. Reed now in control. This has been the year for Doom. They won the World Tag Team Championship back in February at Wrestle War. And they have been dominant World Tag Team Champions. We mentioned it before, Bill, back at the classes. Reed goes for cover one. Then a kick out of one two by Anderson. To your point, Mark, absolutely. Yep. That Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard have not had a World Tag Team title match prior to Halloween Havoc in almost two years. And they are looking to bring that World Tag Team Championship back to the Horsemen. And they need to win this match to get a match at Starkick. And they will get to choose the stipulation that Arn Anderson can pull out a victory here today. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, to your point, as you see a back body drop there by Hexel Butch Reed, Doom has been dominant since February. And I mean dominant. And they have dodge, sidestep no one. Say what you will about their... What a power. He just throws Arn Anderson down like a sack of potatoes there as Double A goes to the outside. Uh, goes to the you outside know, is met by Ron Simmons. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Doom has sidestepped nobody in their reign this year in 1990. They have defended the title successfully by hook or by crook this entire year since February. And, you know, take Theodore Arlong out of the equation, but you got two thoroughbreds in there like Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, the team of Doom. No question in my mind, they have earned that dominance over this entire calendar year. Reed back in the ring. Anderson misses with a clothesline. Reed does not miss with a belly to back suplex. Ooh. Nicely done by Butch Reed. The pace good. of this match, Bill, is very slow. I, not fast pace at all. Both of these men, they don't want to make a mistake. When you take a look at these two guys, they're slow and methodical paces. As uh, Double A clotheslines Axel Butch Reed over the top rope. To your point, he, both of these men employ a very smash mouth, a very deliberate pace. They, they want to keep the, the momentum in their corner, of course. And you're right, you're not going to see a lot of high-flying maneuvers. You're going to see a lot of grounded pound, a lot of uh, tough wrestling, uh, to, to put it simply stated. As he goes into the guardrail ringside, they have taken it to the streets here, so to speak. And the referee has begun to count. He's up to four. A count would actually benefit Doom in this case. Absolutely. The horseman, and especially Double A Arn Anderson, must secure a victory over Hacksaw Butch Reed, as you said, to get that crack of the World Tag Team Championships at Starcade. And to choose the stipulations, we got a pin cover here. We got a pin cover, baby. Oh, oh, a kick oh. Up oh. Tremendous second effort by the enforcer, Arn Anderson, there. As I, I actually thought that could have been it. Referee Sam is coming down for number three on that one. And again, the 
ready for the butch reed staying on top of art anderson but anderson sweeps the leg and takes down the natural so butch reed of course has the size and strength advantage over double a who is no small customer either he's he's a strong strong guy but when you match him up against butch reed and then soup bone right hands and those huge guns he has on him you know, I gotta say, think here that Axel Butchery might have the strength advantage here. We got another attempt at a pinfall here. And this time Reed kicks out at two. Well, Butch Reed can hit you with that shoulder block off the second turn back with a gorge oh. by Anderson. Goes through the cover, hooks the leg. Ripper catch the up, and two, and now it oh. I thought that was it right there. One of the patented maneuvers at double A. With that cord buster, here's, here comes the godfather, Theodore Arlong, once again. Right on Q, Teddy Long up on the apron, and that has given Butch Reed a chance to attack. Now Reed with a head toss, takes him for Anderson. And the godfather, very proud of himself, down at Reed. Of course, mission accomplished. He got the attention of Arn Anderson, which allowed Butch Reed to take advantage of the situation. Reed daring Anderson to get back up to his feet. Anderson in trouble. Reed rolls him over, goes for the cover. Will they retain? Doing the right thing here. One, two, and a kick out of two by Anderson. You got to wonder if he got on Arn Anderson just a few seconds ahead of time. That may have told the story right there. May have chalked up a victory for Axel Butch Reed. I thought Reed was setting up for that short. Oh, here he is. Second turnbuckle. Letting Anderson get back to it. If he hits this bill, it's all over. It's It's got to be over if he does hit it. You're right. There oh, it is. God, he crashes down. Doom is going to get this victory. One. Could be over right two, here. And three. No. Oh. Oh. I got to kick out of it. It's out. We can't believe it. I can't believe it. This crowd can't believe it. You can't believe it. I'm sure the referee can't believe it. Reed puts his men away after that move. But again, Reed staying on top of Anderson did not take too long to reflect on not getting the pack. I can't believe that. But Anderson no. reverses it and no. he's his head into the face of Butch Reed. Double A's got to stay on. There's a spy buster. There it is. Hooks the leg. Back again, there's Teddy Long again. And on the apron bill. Teddy Long once again interfering in this contest. And on Anderson. Well, now it's, now it's candy bar the door, and now they can do anything they want. There's no referee in this match. Anderson getting a steel chair. The referee's down. Oh, and he nails the trip in the chair. Oh, he does it again. The referee referee didn't see it. Three. Anderson rolls him over, goes for the cover. Referee Could be it. Pass one, two, and three. And the horsemen earn their title shot at Starcade, Mark. And what payback from Teddy Long interfering. Arn Anderson takes out the referee and yells Butch Reed with a chair to get the pinfall. And how's that for payback? Well, we saw it at Halloween Havoc, and now it has come back to Blake Doom. All the interference at Halloween Havoc, and now it was Arn Anderson with the chair. He took advantage of a situation. You got to think Doom would have done the same thing. Butch Reed would have done the same thing. Oh, I thought it was it right there. And it might well could have been. But Arn Anderson hanged tough, Marky hung tough throughout the remaining part of this contest. And Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard will get a World Tag Team title match on December 28th at Starcade here live on the Got Mark 76 YouTube channel. And they will get to pick the stipulation for that match. That's exactly right. Starcade 90 collision course. I thought that was it too. We had we saw two. Coup de Gras finishing maneuvers. There was a shoulder block right there. We saw that off the second rope a little bit earlier on. We're going to see it right here. Thought this might be it here. So we saw both finishing maneuvers from Double A and from Butch Reed. Neither one of them was the deciding factor in this one, which I'm quite, quite, quite frankly surprised about, Mark. There's another near fall, right? Look how close that was. But it was Double A. Yep. It has been somewhat of a successful night for the Horsemen. Barry Windham retained a TV title by a draw. Arn Anderson victorious over Butch Reed gets a World Tag Team title match. Our following contest will see Nature Boy Ric Flair challenge Stan Hansen. Can Ric Flair bring the U.S. title back to the Four Horsemen Bill?
It could be a four for four sweep for the horsemen tonight. You saw Arn with the symbol of excellence there, but we might well see a new U.S. heavyweight champion tonight in Nature Boy Ric Flair. Now we are getting right into the introduction of Anderson and Tully taking the side route to the stage, and here is Nature Boy Ric Flair. And he will challenge Stan Hansen back at, at the class to the champions at Fall Brawl Bill. Stan Hansen attacked both Lex Luger and Nature Boy Ric Flair, making it personal for Ric Flair. Uh, we found out tonight earlier that Lex Luger is taking a break, and that's why he never invoked his rematch clause. So this left the door open for Nature Boy Ric Flair, who cannot challenge for the world title since losing the massive sting back at the Great American Bash. So he can challenge for the U.S. title, and here we are tonight. Absolutely. If there was ever a time for Ric Flair to get back in the title picture, now is the time. And with the United States Heavyweight Championship on the line, this one is going to be a classic. You got you talk about a contrast in styles. Ric Flair, the consummate professional wrestler, former six-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion against the new U.S. Heavyweight Champion, Stan Hansen who's about as smash mouth and brutal of a professional wrestler as you can possibly imagine. We've seen that against Orndorff. We saw it against Luger at Halloween Havoc. We saw the havoc he created at the Clash. It was just, this is going to be, you talk about a clash of styles. We're going to see it right here in this one, Mark. And, and the methodical walk to the ringside with that strapping the U.S. tunnel across his shoulder Stan Hansen making his way to the ring, and he he wanted the U.S. title as a stepping stone to the world heavyweight title. Absolutely, you get you have to be it when you're the United States heavyweight champion, Mark. You are the number one contender to the world heavyweight championship, and I gotta think, you know, we've seen Hansen in matches before where he would rush the ring and attack his opponent. You got to think there's probably a little bit of mutual respect here. Believe it or not, that Hanson is showing Flair here by not attacking the ring. I think that's a great point, Bill, because, like you said, I mean, he, he did it versus Orndorff. He did it versus Luger when he won the U.S. title. He used the U.S. title as a weapon in that match. As a weapon. That's right. He's not attacking Flair. That There's an introduction going on as we speak, so there has to be a, a respect on the part of Stan Hanson and... Ric Flair, say what you will about Ric Flair, he's not afraid of anybody. No, he's not. And that, that is proof as he's held the most prestigious championship in the land in the entire wrestling business, the World Heavyweight Championship on six different occasions. You don't beat a bunch of nobodies for that. He has taken on all comers, either as a, a challenger, a champion. And when you're the champion that many times, yeah, you lose him a lot, but you also win him a lot too, Mark. And it, this is going to be an interesting contest. Again, a clash in philosophy is a clash in style, but Flair going right to his bread and butter, going to work on that lower body, perhaps setting the big man from Borger, Texas up for that figure four leg lock. I found it interesting that they did not lock up with a collar and elbow tie up, but Flair with a drop toe hold, take the, the first maneuver of this matchup. Ooh, with a slam down, Hanson has Flair in trouble. Flair, as I mentioned, he's the consummate professional athlete. He's the consummate tactician. And certainly, if there's anybody in the business, anybody in the professional wrestling game who can sense a weakness in an athlete, that man is Nature Boy Ric Flair. And it appears, as we've seen him now continue to go to work on that lower body, maybe he's, in fact, done that. He has, in fact, snuffed out or scouted an injury, a previous injury, a lingering injury on Hanson. What a clothesline by Hanson. Not of the Lariat version, but a close line nonetheless. Takes down Ric Flair. And now a submission maneuver locked in by Stan Hansen. Flair into escape. Nicely done by the Nature Boy. There's one thing that Hansen has over Flair, and that is obvious. It is certainly the size, strength, height, advantage in this matchup. But as we said, Flair likes it big. He's taken on the lights of Lex Luger, the Road Warriors over the years huge men and still come out the winner so this, I'm interested to see if Flair can get back in the title picture by attaining a title that he held way back in the 70s the United States Heavyweight Championship and Flair takes over Hanson 
Now a front face lock and working the leg. And Flair nicely done. He's setting it up. We'll go for the cover. On so top good. one. And the kick it out at one by Hanson. I find it interesting that we're 10 years removed from the last time that Ric Flair actually held the U.S. Heavyweight Championship back in 1980. Forget that. We're going down for lateral press. Oh, and Flair comes out of that. Flair had some absolutely titanic battles with Greg Valentine over the U.S. title back in 1980. And now, 10 years removed from that, he's back in a U.S. title match again, this time against an imposing force in Stan the Larry at Hanson. And up and over the top rope goes Flair Hanson, falling out to the floor. The referee has begun to count. And Hanson throwing Flair into the step oh. to the ringside. He's feeling his oats now. He, he, he's feeling it again. He didn't attack Flair at the outset, but he is certainly doing it on the outside now. This is more This is more the style of Stan Hansen. Smash mouth, street fighting, riotous fighting on the outside, using all the implements and elements outside the ring. But a very smart move by Hansen. If Flair gets counted out, obviously, Stan Hansen retains the U.S. title. Six. Referees counts up to six. Flair getting back to his knees. Seven. Flair runs and charge, just goes back into the ring, but is met with a big right hand. Well said. Flair will not back down from any challenge. He's never backed up from any challenge in his career. Heck, he defied death itself by being involved in a plane crash back in 1975, but he's going after the figure four here, Mark. Figure four locked in. Can Hansen escape? He's close to the ropes. And he makes it to the ropes. Got some significant damage on that leg. He's been working on it, and with that figure four, didn't do it any major justice. If Flair holds true to form, he will continue to relentlessly work on that lower body. He's going for a lateral press here. Ooh, kick out a one by Hanson. Flair going for the cover again. One, two, and boom! Oh! Again. Flair was tenacious with those near falls. He kept going right back after that near fall. It, Forcing Hanson to exert himself kicking out of those near fall situations. And again, you do not become a six time world champion not using every tactic within the rule book to wear down your opponent. Absolutely. Not only that, we've heard Flair on numerous occasions, Mark. You and I both have heard Flair say that he is the dirtiest player in the game. And if there's anybody who can. Oh, forget that. He's got it nowhere, Bill. Oh, the line's oh. hit. It's going to retain one. How many, times we, how many times have we seen Hanson hit the Lariat and it was all over? Hanson's still incredulous. He cannot believe Flair kicked out of it. Flair now going back to work on the leg. He sees an opening here, Mark. I cannot believe it, but I'm still shocked. I am absolutely stunned as well. But Flair, he's not resting on his laurels. He's staying on Hanson. That's what he needs to do if he wants to get that U.S. title away from him. Words of the referee, he can't believe it either, Bill. The referee's you know, saying, you, go back to work on Flair. Exactly. You give Flair an inch, he'll take a country mile on you. You let that man come back, and he will. We've seen that before. And now Hanson working over Flair. So Hanson Flair coming that back. Elbow pad there, Mark. You, you got to figure. He's trying to figure a way to get that Larry back on him again. We're going to see a figure four. Now a spinning toe hold. Flair using that spinning toe hold does about the same damage as the figure four. Ties your knee in a knot. Absolutely. It'll certainly stretch those, as Gorilla Monsoon used to say, lateral collateral ligaments. That'll pull every ligament in your knee by doing that. Terry Funk won the World Heavyweight Championship with that very maneuver. We got a lateral press here. Ooh, kick out at one by Hanson. Flair staying on top of Stan Hansen, but this match should have been over. Hanson nailed the Larry and Flair kicked out. I mean, oh, and a grip. Go Roman thumb to the eyes by Nature Boy Ric Flair. And a big chop takes down Hanson. He's the past master at those Greco Roman thumbs and fingers to the eyes as Nature Boy Ric Flair. Lining up Hanson, and here comes that patented knee drop bill. There it is. 
Right to the Across forehead. The head. Could we see the figure four again? If he holds true to form, he'll be looking for it here. He senses it. Takes a double. Well scouted by Hanson. And another Lariat. Oh! Well, and the last one. Him. Him. Could it be here? Rake mark. Oh, right to the knee again. Again. Flair employing that strategy, going to the lower body. Again, going after that, perhaps, again, he, going after that knee. Setting it up for the figure four is now they're both on the outside. Oh, Hansen, 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 enough. Had enough. Well, I think going to the back. Well, he'll retain his title that way. Hansen's had enough. I mean, he hit Flair with two lariats. What else can he do to put Flair away? Man, I don't know. They're going to the stage. They're going to the back. What in the world? Are we, oh, this Hansen match can't end Hansen's this way. Leaving. Well, Hanson's had enough. Hanson's going back to the locker room. The flare following the suit. Oh, the oh. By Hanson, on the stage. The referee's count is up to six. This is going to be a double count out. It's got to be. There's no way they're going to make it back to the ring in time. The flare's what? running towards the ring. I guess a count out victory is better than nothing, but... He won't win the U.S. title by a countout. Hanson's going backstage. Nine. And the count's oh, up to nine. Man. Flair up in the ring. He's going to win by countout, Bill. Flair wins by countout, but as we well know, he is not going to win the U.S. title that way. So he wins the match, but he does not win the title on this occasion, Mark. You're right, Bill. He does not win the title, but he does win the match, and that could put him into top contendership at Starcade for a U.S. title match. Might we see it, Mark? Might we see it? Fans, we will be back. We will find out the identity of the Black Scorpion tonight. Win, lose, or draw. The Black Scorpion unmasked tonight, and that match is next. As Sting takes on the Black Scorpion. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Clash of the Champions, Thanksgiving Thunder, and that is the man who since the month of August has been sending messages to Sting, playing mind games, if you will, to set up Sting's ultimate demise. Well, tonight we will find out the identity of the Black Scorpion, win, lose, or draw. I've been looking forward to this one as well, and you hear me say that a lot, but... How much more could Sting possibly withstand knowing that this man is the man? This is the Black Scorpion. No more henchmen. This is the guy. And if he can if he can unmask this man tonight, we will now find out who the Black Scorpion is. And I got to think for Sting, he, he might get a sense of, well, not might. He will definitely get a sense of relief, of vindication, and uh, maybe finally this is over. But then, of course, that all leads to Sting's ultimate demise, whatever the heck that is. I don't even understand what that means. That the maniacal mind of the Black Scorpion never ceases to amaze us, Mark. What an entrance for the Black Scorpion. 
want to say he's got he looked like rain and fire from the sky here the black scorpion bringing rain here and it looks like he didn't come to the ring alone uh, it looked like jack victory who was henchman number three and the angel of death who was the first henchman are at ringside and earlier tonight we saw that hot stuff eddie gilbert will be in sting's corner if the black scorpion did not come alone well, as we will, as we have seen, he has come with two of his henchmen. You know, it's like victory and the uh, and the angel of death. They're acting like a bunch of Russian assassins or something. But uh, that's <laughs> another story for another era. As the yes. world heavyweight champion comes to the ring in all his glory, he's held on to the title for quite some time now, and he's faced all comers. He's, he took he took and turned aside the challenge of Sid Vicious and Halloween Havoc as he screams out to the tens upon thousands of fans here in Jacksonville. This is certainly a champion of champions right here, in my opinion. The most popular athlete in all of World Championship Wrestling, without question, the Stinger. And oh, and the Black Scorpion going to work on Sting in the early going. Stop it, it, away, it, it, and there's Eddie Gilbert. The same Sting. He's going to make this even, Bill. What it, was it? Oh, wait. Whoa, what is this? Oh, what the hell is this? Wait, wait, just wait, wait, for wait, a wait. second. Eddie Gilbert smiling. Eddie, when the Black Scorpion's leaving the ring, wait a second, Bill. Are you? Eddie Gilbert's oh. wrestling stand. Are you telling me that Eddie Gilbert's a Black Scorpion? I can't believe that. I can't know. Oh my gosh, what a shocker here. Eddie Gilbert is a Black Scorpion. Again. I can't believe that. that is, I can't believe that. I mean, these guys are best friends. What is going on here tonight? What a setup by Eddie Gilbert. We haven't seen Gilbert since February, and he is the Black Scorpion Sting. He's shocked. He's not even attacking Gilbert. I, I, I think. I, I was going to say, I think Sting's just as shocked as we are. He thought Gilbert was out there to be in his corner, for God's sakes. I can't. I, I can't believe what we what we're seeing here. I so, cannot believe this. There's no mind games now. There's no, there's no big surprise. Eddie Gilbert's a black scorpion. What? Who? Who the hell is Sting's ultimate demise? I, 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 I don't know. We're seeing a best friend. These guys were tag team partners. They're friends out of the ring. What has gotten into hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert? Why would he do this? Sting fighting back, but I do not envy Sting in this position. No. A front face lock takes down Gilbert. We're now working the leg. Stick he has to win this match. I mean, he's the world heavyweight champion, but I don't think he's too happy about wrestling his friend Eddie Gilbert. I can tell you this. I, I, you know, the Sting, I am sure that he had no idea in his wildest imaginings that he thinks he's facing the black square. Hot stuff Eddie Gilbert that he think in his wildest imaginings he'd be facing his, one of his best friends here tonight. Now they're both the the outside sting picks up Gilbert going for a slam reverse but like Gilbert oh. drops him down oh my god oh my. I, 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 I'm incredulous I, I can't believe what we're witnessing here we ain't so we have not seen Gilbert in months he comes back he pledges his allegiance to sting and now this something's something's up here I, I don't get this at all I mean what what could possibly possess Eddie Gilbert to turn on Sting. Is it jealousy? I, I have no idea, Bill. I'm hoping that we can find out in the days and weeks to come, but I have no idea. I am shocked. I, I'm let down as Gilbert has a Boston crowd locked in on Sting who makes it to the road. What has Sting gone through since August? All of this Black Scorpion stuff, all of these, uh, all these interviews, all these threats, all these henchmen, and a hot stuff Eddie Gilbert? And he's behind all this? I, I can't. Goes for the cover. Sting's down one, two, and the kick out of two. Oh, Sting. And Bill, let's, let's look at the henchman. Yeah. The Angel of Death was a trade partner Sting at Power Team USA back in 1985. That's right. The second henchman, while he turned out to be Terry Taylor and had a code of honor, he was a former tag team partner of Sting back in the UWF. In 1986, and then Jack Victory, a part of Hot Stuff International, also 
a partner of Sting has Gilbert and has him up and spikes him down with a pile driver. And who was at the head of that Hyatt and Hot Stuff International? The guy in the ring is facing Gilbert who left the top from Sting too. Oh. And a kick out by Sting. Wow, what a wicked web Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert has woven. All the time he was away, all the time he's been away from World Championship Wrestling. Was he just plotting all this out the entire time? Wow. All I can say is wow, Mark. This, this Eddie crowd. Gilbert, I, I, I don't know, but I, <laughs> I, I, I can't believe it. Oh, what a move by Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. That's Look, power right there. Pin sting. One, two, and a kick out by Sting. And after all this, in, uh, we're still incredulous here. We're still in shock here in Jacksonville. But, I mean, Eddie Gilbert? I mean, Eddie Gilbert. Of all people, and, and Sting, we were forgetting here, the World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Stinger's There's the Stinger's the corner, down goes Gilbert. Gilbert reeling Sting, not Sting again, Sting is shot. Sting takes he down is. Gilbert, has a scorpion. Turns him over, has it locked in. Could be it. And Gilbert makes it to the ropes. He's staring at Gilbert as if to say, what in the world have you done? What have you done? I, 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 I mean, are we going down for a lateral press, Mark? For the cover, one, two, and three, no! Gilbert no. kicks out. The, what, Maybe Sting will take up the referee at the knees. I don't know. How else well, I don't know. It worked out. for Hanson. It worked <laughs> for Stan Hanson. <laughs> and Sting dragging Gilbert across the leg across the throat. Oh, yeah. Gilbert gets up, kicked in it. Oh, I think that may have been a low blow. I think so as well. The referee should really get a look at that as Stink shoves Gilbert down. I think Stink's about had enough of this now. I think shock and all is over with. Now he's taking care of business as he fires up on Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Gilbert in the corner. Stink has him set up front. Stinger splash in the corner. And down goes Gilbert again. And Stink drops an elbow for good measure. I think he's going to make Gilbert pay for it now. I think he's going to make Gilbert pay for it now. Oh, he's Go going down for lateral press. One, two, and one. Kick out a one by Gilbert. And Sting still in shock like we are. I can't believe it either. Sting setting up for the score. Maybe your right bull is going to make Gilbert pay for it. Yes, he is with an Maybe ultimate submission. Yep. Turned him over. Has a scorpion death locked in. Not many have gotten out of this. Gilbert's trapped in it. He submits. And Gilbert pops. And hopefully this black scorpion situation is behind Sting. Oh. And he can focus on finding out what this ultimate demise is. I was going to say we still have to find out who this ultimate demise is. But hot stuff Eddie Gilbert revealed as the black scorpion. I'm still in awe and in shock. Not in awe, but in shock over this. Of all people, of all people, hot stuff Eddie Gilbert. But staying much to his credit, Mark, the fighting champion he is, he still, after all the adversity, after his friend, his, one of his best friends turning on him, as we see hot stuff Eddie Gilbert here with a lateral press, but Stinger kicked out. We see that scorpion, uh, excuse me, a Stinger splash there in the corner. He would go for the scorpion at that point. But uh, of all people, and he still comes out the world heavyweight champion over hot stuff Eddie Gilbert after all the adversity after all the mind games and then this ultimate swerve and he still comes out the champion I got to give it to, to Sting he definitely proved he is well worth of worthy of being world heavyweight champion right here tonight I agree 100% but there's another stinger splash in the corner and your winner and still world heavyweight champion Sting and what is, what's, what what is this second? what is, is that is that the ultimate demise? Look at that, Bill. Well, he's big and he's bad. He's got no face. I don't know what that is. Of all we've seen here tonight, now what? Fans, we thank you so much oh. for joining us here at Clash of the Champions. Wow. Bill and I will be back December 20th for Starcade. And Zach, the man behind the curtain, will join us. And they're not done yet. They're attacking each other on the stage. They're going fist and fire, this big blue guy in the stinger. I don't know who that is. It might well be the ultimate demise. Look at this. They're going at it right on the stage. Fans, thank you so much for joining us. We're out of time. For Bill Knight, I'm Mark Lindsay.
We'll see you at Starcade.